Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us here today for the fourth press conference we've had on day two of the World Economic Forum annual meeting. This is a very important one, not just in terms of uh, the, the message and the achievements we're about to hear about, but it's also, um, it's also a reflection of, uh, of an initiative which was born out of this annual meeting itself 15 years ago. This is um, Gavi at 15. It's how a Davos-born idea has seen half a billion children immunised and is boosting efforts to end extreme poverty. We have a packed panel, so I don't want to monopolise any more of your time. I will therefore briefly introduce my panel and uh, in, in, invite them to make opening remarks. Hopefully we'll have time for some questions before the end of this half hour is up. To my immediate left, um, I'm honoured to be joined by His Excellency Ibrahim Boubacar Kai, to the President of Mali, Dr. Seth Barkley, Chief Executive Officer of Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, Amina Mohammed, Assistant Secretary General, Special Advisor on Post-2015 Development Planning, Christian Parody, Minister for International Development uh, and for La Francophonie, the Government of Canada, and Dr. Maria Furtwängler Berder, who is the One Ambassador for Child Health. I'd like to start by inviting the President to make a, a few opening remarks. Um, the President will be speaking in French and there will be a translator. Merci beaucoup. Uh, je voudrais dire combien nous sommes fiers d'être membres de l'alliance Gavi, alliance du vaccin, et nous jouons notre rôle à travers le cofinancement. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Mr. Chair, I would like to say first of all that uh, we are uh, very proud to be members of the uh, Vaccine Alliance, and we are playing our part through co-financing within the Gavi Alliance. En fait, nous voulons avoir des programmes de vaccination solides qui serviront les générations futures. Actually, what we need is to have very robust and solid vaccination immunization programs so that to be able to also serve and help out the future generation. C'est la raison essentielle de notre collaboration avec Gavi. So this is actually the uh, critical and uh, essential uh, the way that we are collaborating cooperating with Gavi. L'engagement de du Mali envers ses enfants est très fort parce que C'est l'avenir du Mali, du pays. Mali commitment to our children in Mali is very strong because we believe that they are the future of our country, the future of our country. Nous avons beaucoup à faire, nous avons beaucoup de défis euh, auxquels nous sommes confrontés. Pour autant, nous avons fait de grands progrès euh, au cours des, deux, des dernières années. Par exemple, en augmentant la couverture de plus de 30% de là où elle était en 2000. We know that uh, we have so many things to do uh, in Mali, and uh, we have been able to make progresses, certainly in uh, stating that we have been able to increase the uh, coverage by over 30 percent from where it were uh, before that in 2000. Cette augmentation de la couverture vaccinale n'a pas été facile. En raison de tous les défis auxquels notre pays, vous le savez, est confronté depuis la crise de 2012. Increasing uh, the uh, coverage of immunization in Mali is not an easy task, uh, particularly when you know that uh, you are aware of the fact that uh, we have been through a very serious crisis of the history of our country, but we have managed, and uh, despite that situation, to make progress on the rate of recovery of humanization in Mali. Et nous croyons fermement en la puissance protectrice du vaccin pour les enfants. Because we do believe firmly in the powerful protection uh, that the uh, vaccination immunization can bring, particularly to children in Mali. La santé est à la base de tout. We know that uh, health is really the basis of everything. Vous ne pouvez pas espérer un développement économique si vous n'avez pas les ressources humaines en bonne santé. You cannot really hope about um, 
economic development and progress if you do not have uh, the resources, the human resources, to help in that uh, increase in economic rate and uh, development and to have these resources to be in good state of health. That is why investing in health is critical as far as we are concerned. Et nous l'avons vu récemment avec euh, l'épidémie de la fièvre à Ebola. We have uh, seen uh, actually with the uh, the epidemic of the uh, uh, Ebola hemorrhagic fever. Il fallait des réponses rapides, immédiates, urgentes. We need to react, we need to respond to that situation very swiftly. Ça va détecter suivre, soigner et prévenir. To be able to detect, to be able to heal and to be able to face the situation of that uh, epidemic in, my, in, uh, in our region. Tout cela avec un système de santé uh, amélioré, uh, mieux formé. Of course, we can get results when we have a trained and well-trained uh, health system in our country. Les vaccins sont une technologie très puissante qui nous aide non seulement à combattre les maladies basiques telles que la pneumonie, telles que la diarrhée, qui font tant de dégâts au niveau des enfants, mais il y a aussi la rougeole et nous espérons bientôt que nous trouverons un vaccin également contre la fièvre à virus Ebola. Vaccines are a powerful technology that help us uh, not only to with uh, fighting against pneumonia against diarrhea, but we have the two other big child killers, which are uh, missiles that we hope also that we'll be able to come up with a vaccine against uh, Ebola very soon. Nous saluons et soutenons la décision du Conseil d'administration de Gavi, euh, décision d'introduire de, euh, dès lors qu'ils seront prêts les vaccins de préqualification pour l'introduire parmi les vaccins Des, euh, qui seront, euh, mis à usage. We obviously welcome the alliance uh, recent board decision to uh, uh, support the rollout of Ebola vaccines as soon as uh, they are pre-qualified for that. And also we help that uh, we, we, we hope that we will be able very soon to be able to implement uh, those in our country. Pourquoi je me réjouis que nous nous retrouvions bientôt dans une semaine à Berlin. That is why I look forward to that we were able to be meeting in one week's time in Berlin. Autour de la chancelière Mme Merkel. Uh, together with Chancellor Merkel. Pour encore une promotion plus forte encore de Gavi. So that, so that we can come out stronger uh, against uh, the, the diseases that are threatening our, our, our children. Pour les enfants du monde et and for les, the children of the world et la santé. and for the good of the health system. Merci. Thank you. Seth Buffy. Thank you so much. And, and uh, the President said a lot of the important things I would say. But I think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, the great problems of the world aren't going to be solved by the UN alone, by government alone, by the private sector alone. It requires these new and innovative partnerships. And, you know, that's a lot of what the World Economic Forum is about, and that's why it's so appropriate. To, this was born here at the WEF, as you heard, 15 years ago, and has taken this to scale. It's a model of scale, but it's also a model of sustainability. And, you know, half a billion children um, uh, reached and seven million million deaths prevented. It's an extraordinary set of accomplishments. But, you know, it's important as we look at the global issues, and I know uh, Mina will talk about this, you know, the fact that the MDGs were set up, the Millennium Development Goals, was an important way to focus interest. And so MDG 4, which is a reduction of child mortality by two-thirds, we won't quite meet that globally. But we will have brought it down more than 50 percent, which is an extraordinary accomplishment, particularly given since population has gone up during this period. 
And since 2000, if you look at this, 50 percent of the reduction in child mortality came from just three diseases, measles, diarrhea, and pneumonia, things that are being targeted by these new and powerful vaccines that we have. So this is a really important issue. We now have vaccines against cancer. And so the challenge is how do we get these out to every person in the world? We already have a technology. These technologies are the most widely uh, uh, technologies used in the world. Ninety-five percent of people on Earth are touched by them, but we need to do a better job to get all of the vaccines out. So that's really the message. Um, as you've heard, we will be meeting on Tuesday in Berlin to try to raise $7.5 billion additional dollars. And if fully funded, Gavi will be able to immunize an additional 300 million children and prevent another five to six million deaths, which will have economic benefits of between 80 and $100 billion. Thank you very much. Amina, you're, uh, you're very busy at the moment with the, the, you know, the, uh, the development goals. Tell us about that a little bit and give us some context as to why you're supporting this initiative and this, uh, this institution. Well, the, the, thank you very much, and uh, Excellency you, President Kato of Miley. Um, it's really an important opportunity for the Secretary General to say a few words. So if you don't mind, I'd like to read some of what he wanted to transmit in a message to support, support what has been an incredible initiative. Um, certainly reinforcing that too many, still too many women and children are dying from causes that simple immunization could prevent. And he has seen how preventable diseases take away the precious lives far too soon. Proud champion of uh, promoting the upcoming Gavi replenishment because it is right for individuals and societies. And when women and children are healthy, classrooms are fuller, workplaces are more productive, and whole economies uh, can be transformed. Uh, applauding the announcement of Gavi, uh, saving the 7 million lives um, and half a billion people that have been immunized since inception. Um, this has had an enormous uh, impact um, in the individual lives uh, and of families. We also know that Gavi is working to ensure a fundamental human right that where a child is born should never determine whether he or she has access to life-saving vaccinations. All mothers want their children to survive and all children deserve the best possible start in life. Uh, the partnership with Gavi continues with countries in the lead and it gets vaccines to the people and the hardest to reach places where they're most needed. Uh, and when we have the resources for Gavi, um, it does its job and we've seen it going to scale. <coughs> it also advances what is important right now, the global strategy for the Secretary General's initiative um, on every woman, every child. And this year we're completing the work of the Millennium Development Goals and aiming to adopt a new agenda for a sustainable development future. A renewed global strategy, which reinforces the work of Gavi, um, is one that we will hope accelerate progress. And, and we thank Gavi for, for uh, really helping us to boost this strategy. So here together, sending a very strong message to the world that the lives of women and children matter for our common future. A fully resourced Gavi is part of our goal that leaves no one behind. And we're applauding countries that have already made pledges but um, the Secretary General very firmly would like to advocate and call on all countries to make strong pledges in the upcoming replenishment conference and ensure that we reach the target of 7.5 billion. That's his remarks. Mine are that there is a development framework um, that is about to be uh, um, addressed and, and hopefully gaveled in September this year. Um, a large part of that depends on the financing conference in Addis this year. Um, and I think that this is where the moment of opportunity uh, for the world really exists. It's a process that has involved everyone, incredible experience just in two days that I've been here, where people who have been involved with this process over the last two years are actually speaking to these issues now and really looking to see how do we make a sustainable development framework um, work for people at the center, but still be planet sensitive and have the resources to do so. Thank you very much. Christian. Parody, Canada has been a, a key investor in Gavi for some time now. Please give us some thoughts on why this continues to be a good Thank investment. Thank you. Uh, merci beaucoup. Je suis très heureux d'être ici pour célébrer le 15e anniversaire de Gavi, ses accomplissements et ce qui s'en vient également en termes de conférences pour la reconstitution du fonds à Berlin la semaine prochaine. It's a pleasure for me to be here uh, to celebrate the 440 million children reached with life savings vaccination since Gavi's. Uh, creation in 2000, to celebrate the 6 million lives saved since 2000, and we're all proud of that, uh, of that success. 
And it, it is wonderful that we are taking a moment to celebrate today. But we must also remember that more than 22 million children around the world are still not fully immunized. And 1.5 million children under five die of vaccine-preventable diseases every year. And it is within our power to do something about this. And we know that immunization works. We believe in this. It is one of the best investments we can make to save lives and improve the health of children, their families, communities, and countries. We need to work together as a global community to ensure that in Berlin on January 27th, Gavi is fully funded and able to action its 2016-2020 strategy, a very promising strategy. It is our collective responsibility to the world's children. I am proud to say that Canada has already stepped up in the plate. At the Francophonie Summit in Senegal in uh, November 2014, Prime Minister Harper pledged $500 million for Gavi's 2016-2020 strategy and announced an additional $20 million to, to strengthen immunization programs for children in Central and West African Francophone countries. These pledges are part of Canada's commitment to improving the health of the world's modern newborns and children, or top development priority. Canada urges global leaders to step up and mobilize the resources that Gavi needs to keep saving lives. I'm also proud that Canada is a founding donor of the advanced market commitment to make vaccines for pneumonia, which kills nearly 3,000 children every day, available in, in 46 developing countries more quickly. <coughs> the, the, the advanced market commitment is an example of how innovative financing can work to save lives. The advanced market commitment has created incentives for vaccine makers to quickly produce affordable vaccines that are suitable for the world's poorest countries. As the chair of the Redesigning Development Finance Initiative Steering Committee, I am very proud of this, and I want to see more of this kind of innovative financing working to benefit of the world's most vulnerable. As Amina, as Amina just said, uh, at this conference is coming. We need to uh, act together on this. As Dr. Berkeley said, it cannot be done alone. We have all to work together, and that is why Canada is focusing on exploring creative ways to engage the private sector to contribute to sustainable development and improve global health. International development and global health are now the domain of multi-stakeholder partnerships for a cross-section of society. The private sector is a key to this because it has the resources, expertise, and innovation that we need to create new and more effective products, services, and technologies. So let us celebrate our successes today, but let us also turn our minds to how we can be innovative in our thinking and continue to deliver tangible results for the world's children. And let us once again congratulate Gavi on 15 successful years of saving lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, Dr. Maria Furtwängler. Your remarks, please. Yes, thank you. First of all, it's a great honor for me to support the effort of Gavi and this incredible work you've done, you especially, Seth, uh, admirable. It's a great pleasure for me uh, to support this coming from Germany. I know that Germany plays an important role, not only as a donor, not as important, I believe, as Canada is, but certainly uh, quite a good contributor to the Gavi effort. And, uh, and of course, Germany is this year uh, hosting the G7. So I'm very proud and happy that uh, our Chancellor Merkel is going to uh, host the, the dinner and the conference, the replenishment conference next week. Uh, so I'm very happy and proud to support this. And I talked to Chancellor Merkel yesterday, and she's really very dedicated to that cause. And beyond that, I'm of course happy to support as a mother because I'm totally aware how terrifying, terrible it must be as a mother when you can't give your children what they could have, what they would need to survive their childhood, their early childhood. And, uh, and I'm incredibly happy if it's possible to give, because seven million child deaths means nearly seven million mothers grieving, nearly seven million mothers not haven't been able giving their children the best they could have. And as a physician, I must say, I've been working um, in Nairobi and in, in slums there in Kolkata and uh, on the Philippines. And to me, as, uh, when I was a young doctor, 
uh, I was always very proud because it was so easy to save lives, you know, a little baby coming with diarrhea, you give some uh, infusion of liquid, uh, basically, wie sagt man, and you could save a life. And pneumonia, we had the antibiotics, we could treat it, and it was very satisfying for me as a young doctor. But then, of course, I realized, okay, but for the maybe 100 uh, children I've seen in these uh, few weeks suffering from diarrhea and pneumonia, how many are not able to reach the ambulance from the German doctors? How many out there in the slums, in the jungle, are not able to travel, cannot afford that? And uh, to me, it's an incredibly powerful uh, idea that through this vaccination, through simple vaccination against the most common uh, uh, bacteria of, that cause diarrhea and pneumonia, we can save those lives of those children that are, can't make it, you know, to any uh, doctor shelter. I think this is a, a wonderful thing to do, uh, to, and I'm proud to be part of this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. We do have time for some questions. I see a show of hands for anyone. Who... Ben. We all know you, but for the benefit of our online audience and our speakers here, please give us your name and your title. Uh, ben Herschler from Reuters. Um, I wonder, if Seth, if you can comment a bit on how confident you are of hitting the 7.5 billion you need next week in Berlin, and where do you think the, the reticence might be amongst the donors? So we've had extremely strong support. And just to reemphasize again, I can't say how much uh, Germany has done, and not only the chancellor personally, but the diplomatic service has been fabulous. But many other champions, the Canadian prime minister has weighed in. Uh, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates have weighed in. Uh, the the uh, prime minister of the UK, et cetera, et cetera. So we've had very strong support. And of course, I am an optimistic person. Um, I will say that the, um, uh, the change in exchange rates has has affected us uh, pretty dramatically um, in that, of course, we made our original requests um, uh, now, uh, 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 you know, almost seven months ago, and exchange rates have dramatically changed. So that is a challenge that we will be having in front of us and will be discussed by the donors at that time, in fact, are being discussed ahead of time. But we are optimistic because um, at the end of the day, and as Amina has said, having a fully funded Gavi is absolutely critical to be able to make sure that these access to vaccines is unfettered for all those who, who really need it. Thank you. Any other questions? Gentleman at the back, yes. Oh, Graham. Hello. Uh, Graham Weirden from The Guardian. Uh, two questions, please. Um, are there any large countries in particular who you're disappointed haven't made some commitments or hints of support yet? Secondly, on the exchange rate issue, are you considering lowering the target? So um, on those two issues, first of all, um, uh, you know, we uh, – not every country has stepped forward and made a commitment as the UK has, as Canada has, have others have done uh, prospectively. Some are holding it for that day. So, um, you know, in a sense, we won't know until that day um, finally uh, where we end up with, and, and that's why that, that meeting is so important. Um, uh, your second question was? Is it lowering targets because of exchange rates? Yeah. Um, the issue is is that we purchase our vaccines in dollars, um, and um, that's the currency we work in. A couple in euro, but but most of it is is negotiated in dollars, and therefore, if we don't end up with that adequate finance, then we won't be able to pay for those vaccines. But of course, this is something, as I said, that we're all discussing. And the thing about exchange rates, of course, is they go up and down, and so this is something that we always have to deal with. Once we get finance, of course, we hedge against currency exchanges, but you can't do that from pledges. So. Anyone else? Okay. Well, it, with almost um, um, classic Swiss timing, it's, uh, it's, it's 3.30, and uh, we all have busy schedules to, to attend to and, and, and pick up. So I'll close this press conference. I'd like to thank my panel for joining us. I'd like to wish you the very best for next week and going forwards. Thank you all for joining us uh, in the audience and also on our webcast platform, weforum.org. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.